What is the optimal range of ketones for being in a nutritional state of ketosis? When you're testing your ketone levels, where are you landing? And is it where you should be? Well, here's the thing. First off, it's important to know that everybody responds to ketosis a little bit differently. Some people are heavy fat oxidizers, which means they get into ketosis very easy and their ketone levels get up in the high range very easily. Some people have to work a little bit harder, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're not getting the benefits of ketosis. It just means that you have less flowing around in the blood at a given point in time. Personally, I don't get into super, super deep ketosis. I never really have. My wife, on the other hand, two days in ketosis and she's reading high levels on a ketone. Meter. So there's a few ways that we can test. I'm going to lay them all out for you really quick. You can test with a urine strip, you can test with a breath meter, or you can test with a blood meter. By far the most accurate way is to utilize a blood meter, simply because you're actually pulling straight from your blood. You're getting straight beta hydroxybutyrate readouts from the blood. Urine strips are great too, but they're really only effective when you first start, simply because they measure acetoacetate and they measure excess ketones. So that means if your body becomes efficient at utilizing ketones, you're not gonna register on a urine strip anymore. They are really good in the beginning because your body is creating so many, it's kind of inefficient. So that allows us to understand that as you get deeper into ketosis or you do it for a longer period of time, you might not create as many ketone bodies as you did right at the very beginning. So now that that's off the table, let's go ahead and get right to how this system works. When you use a blood ketone meter, you will find that you have a readout that's generally anywhere between zero and three. Okay, but I have a lot of people that come to me that say they're not getting into a deep ketosis state. They're staying at like 0 0.1 or 0 0.2. Well, here's the thing. If you are below a 0 0.5 on a blood ketone meter, you are barely in ketosis. Some people will say you're not in ketosis at all, but that's not true. You're in ketosis. You're creating ketone bodies and they're registering in the blood. You're just not in the optimal range. Now, what could actually be happening when you're in this range? Could be a number of things. The most obvious one is your carbohydrates are a little bit too high, okay? But the second one is your fats aren't high enough, okay? Believe it or not, if you're not getting to the state of ketosis that you wanna be in, your fats just might not be high enough, so you don't have the ability to actually create the ketone bodies as much as you would like to. So increase the fats and it can help a lot. The other thing is if you tested first thing in the morning, you might find that your ketone levels are significantly lower. My ketone levels are lower in the morning than they are later in the day. And this has to do with a natural rise in blood sugar that happens in the morning. Your body creates more glucose in the morning, whether it's creating it from muscle, creating it from carbohydrates that you eat, or creating it from protein that you eat. It just creates more in the morning. So your ketone levels in the morning will generally be lower. Additionally, if you test it after exercise, you might find that your ketone levels are lower than what you want, simply because your body has already burned through the fat and it starts breaking down protein that you've eaten or sometimes even breaking down a little bit of the protein that you have in your body. Doesn't mean you're wasting muscle, it just means your body is recruiting different sources in aminos to create sugar. Which leads me to the next one, the most important one. If your ketone levels are not getting where you want them, there's a good chance that your protein intake is too high. If you have too much protein, your body takes those amino acids and converts them through gluconeogenesis into a sugar. That is a big problem for a lot of people. I see a lot of people that cut their protein intake down and then all of a sudden their ketone readings go up. Now, it is exceptionally important to test periodically throughout the day. And that's exactly why using a blood meter is important because you can get a solid readout of where you are at. I always use Keto Mojo because they're awesome and because they also help sponsor this channel, which makes it very, very easy for me to get you a lot of data. Okay, but next up, I wanna talk about what the optimal range is, okay? This optimal range is supposedly gonna be anywhere from one to three. I'm gonna say on the record here that I think that between one and 1 1.5 is sort of the optimal state. That means that you're producing enough ketone bodies to truly get the result that you want, but you're not having too much. You see, if you start having too much in the way of ketones, that might mean that you're not active enough. It might mean that your body isn't utilizing the ketones properly, so you're creating a lot of them. It's not gonna do anything bad for you if you're in a nutritional state of ketosis and your ketone levels are high, but it just means that you're probably not giving your body a chance to utilize stored body fat a little bit more. So here's what's really interesting. When your body is using only stored body fat as its preferred ketone source at a certain point in time, you'll find that your ketone bodies are usually in the one millimole per liter range. But if you increase your fat intake a lot, that's when you get deeper into ketosis. You're not gonna see like a three or a four millimoles per liter 
just when you're fasting because it doesn't accelerate that fast with just your body fat. You're only going to get there if you're consuming a lot of fat or you're in a deep, deep, deep starvation mode or ketoacidosis if you're an actual diabetic or type 1 diabetic. So what does that mean? It means that if you have too high of ketone levels while you are in a nutritional state of ketosis, your calories are probably too high. You can probably stand to back off the fat so you give your body an opportunity to use the stored body fat. Let me rephrase this a little bit simpler. When you're in ketosis, you want to get your body used to using fat as a source of fuel. And you do that by priming it with lots of dietary fat. That gets your ketone levels nice and high. Then you temporarily deprive yourself of dietary fats so that your body has no choice but to seek out and crave fat from your body tissue. That's when you start burning fat and having cosmetic results with ketosis. And that happens at that one millimole range. So don't get discouraged if you're at the 0.5, 0.7, or even just the one millimole range, you're fine. You're still in a nutritional state of ketosis. You just might find that you don't get the crazy cognitive benefits until you're at about 1.5 millimoles per liter. But how can you get your ketone levels up a little bit more if you're sitting in that 0.2, 0.3 range all the time? Well, again, first thing that I think you should do is actually increase your fats. Before you think about decreasing carbs, I think you should focus on the fats first, because chances are you're doing okay with the carbohydrate thing. A lot of frustration comes with people that know they're doing a good job, but they don't know why they're not in a deeper state of ketosis. Up the fats. The other thing is, back off the exercise a little bit. This is something that I used to do way too much of when I was in a state of ketosis. Your body is using ketones, which means it's optimized for endurance work. If you are doing a lot of high intensity interval training, or you're doing a lot of anaerobic work, your body's gonna have no choice but to try to create glucose to fuel those activities. So it's getting used to creating glucose, therefore it's breaking down protein and it's creating sugar somehow. Again, not saying you're going to waste away, but you are going to get yourself kicked out of ketosis or in a lower state of ketosis. So I highly recommend that you measure whenever possible. We have a saying here in business and that's, in God we trust, everything else give me data. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. If you have ideas for future videos, make sure you hit them below. Or if there's any kind of testing you want me to do on myself using blood meters and using different foods and different activities, let me know. I'd love to try them out. I'll see you soon.